right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the infamous interview. Today, I am joined by Robert. He was best known for Bob Vance Refrigeration on the. So, Robert, how did you get that role to begin with? The role of Bob Vance, Vance yes, Refrigeration in the office. That role. Uh, well, like most of the other ones in my life, I auditioned for it. I mean, um, I read for uh, Allison Jones, who was the is the great casting director, comedy casting director, who does most of Will Ferrell's movies. And, uh, you know, so uh, it was Halloween. And, and as I came out of the office in Hollywood, there were these girls dressed as angels. And I kept thinking, ah, maybe that's an omen. <laughs> right. Because they were screwing around, you know, with their wands and whatnot, and and I may have been flirting a little. And then uh, I got a call uh, back uh, two weeks later, and I went to the soundstage out in Van Nuys where the show was filmed, and Phyllis was there, and the director, and, uh, you know, I did a, a lot of improv. Look, Michael, uh, look, Bob, there's Michael, react. <laughs> you know, silly stuff. But the next morning I was on the set, uh, first guy up shooting Bob Vance. Yeah, and you were also in some other kind of genre stuff early on in your career, like Psycho Cop. So how did you get involved with those as well? What's that? How did you get involved with uh, Psycho Cop in your earlier work as well? Well, I auditioned. <laughs> You know, it was, uh, they put a notice in the um, Backstage Weekly, was the name of the publication, and I got that every Thursday and put my 8x10, uh, you know, photo and resume, as sparse as it was then, into an envelope and took it to the post office, and I got a call from the director. I went to his house. Uh, the material they used was the Sam Shepard play, True West. We, in, in other words, we didn't read from the script, the actual psycho, uh, psycho cop script. And uh, I got the part. <laughs> you know, so uh, the funny story I like to tell about that movie is, you know, I, we waited about three months to get the money. And uh, I, it, the director and the producer of the film actually sent me to the executive producer's office and they said, why don't you rent the costume and just go over to his office and see if you can get the money? <laughs> so I, you know, I rent the cop outfit. I, I show up in Beverly Hills unannounced in the middle of the afternoon and, and, you know, act psycho and, and tough for about a half an hour. And so finally the producer looked, executive producer looks at me and goes, okay, we'll make it. <laughs> so that, that's how we got It's kind of a fun experience, right? Well, it, it was great. You know, I mean, I was the, I signed a five picture deal. I was the title character in a, a horror franchise to my way of thinking. And, uh, you know, the film treated me well, even though we only made two of them. Uh, I, I got to go to the Cannes Film Festival and, you know, parade around in the outfit over there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was a good experience because I learned a lot. I met a lot of people from it. I learned a lot about the business, certainly, from making those films. And uh, they, they live on. You know, uh, Psycho Cop is getting a Blu-ray release uh, in December of this year. Uh, finally, first one. I think the fans oh, are excited. Wow. That. And the Blu-ray release of uh, Psycho Cop Returns, the reviews were phenomenal. You know, I waited 25 years to get those reviews. And uh, when I got them, they were great. And, you know, people loved the film. So it was nice for uh, people to see the film the way director Adam Rifkin intended for it to be seen. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, we had a screening of it in Hollywood to a packed theater. It was the first time we'd ever seen the film in a full theater with an audience. And, you know, it, it worked when it was supposed to work. You right. know what I mean? The kills still worked when they worked and the comedy still played and the scares were there. You know, I tell the, the story, the joke we always had on that film was, you know, we shot it in two weeks, mostly nights uh, in this high rise out in Burbank. And the advantage that we had on Psycho Cop Returns was that we stopped at Photochem to watch the dailies every day. The, the, the crew and the cast 
we watched what we had shot the day before, which really informed the film. We saw what we were getting. Everybody knew what we were doing. I mean, we were going, you know, balls out. <laughs> I mean, you know, we were shooting fast and dirty and 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 getting it done. And so, uh, you know, we weren't screwing around. We don't have time for, you know, 10 takes. I mean, we're doing it in one and two, getting the coverage and moving on. And that's the way I like to shoot. You know, I like that fast pace. Uh, I did Pee Wee's Big Holiday, and that took forever. <laughs> I mean, you're, right. you're kind of just sitting around. Everybody's waiting for Pee Wee. Is Pee Wee coming? Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and you recently did a movie with Jan uh, from The Office as well called Cage. So how yeah. was it like being kind of reunited with her, so to speak? Well, you know, we didn't work that much on The Office. I mean, uh, right. you know, both fans didn't really do many scenes with Jan around. I think Casino Night, she was there uh, some. And, you know, but I, I'm a fan of hers. I mean, she's been, uh, you know, an actress for a long time. She started when she was quite young. The funny story on Caged was, you know, I, I looked up her resume and I read some of her credits and I saw that she had done Iron Eagle, which my, starred my friend. Uh, Jason Gedrick, <laughs> who I'd go to school with, and we're still buddies, you know, so I'm, I bring this up to, uh, you know, Melora, I say, oh, I see that you did Iron Eagle with, with Jason Gedrick, he's my buddy, and she goes, that's the only guy that ever stood me up. <laughs> <laughs> Bad topic. So, uh, you know, it was fun because uh, the movie uh, is a real psychological thriller. You know, yeah. she and I were playing prison guards and she was the good guard. I was, I mean, I was the good guard and she was the bad one. I was really <laughs> impressed with her in that too. That was a great performance by her. And she was a gum chewing maniac. I mean, I was scared <laughs> of her. I, I, <laughs> I know her to be, you know, I know her to be Jan or, you know, a really nice girl. I mean, a really nice lady. I mean, she's very talented. Obviously, she could sing and dance and she does it all. So going back to your time on The Office, what were some of the best times you had improv on set with the cast? Well, we didn't do that much improv you know. I snuck oh, really? a few. No, no. I, uh, they like you to do it exactly the way it's written. I mean, it's network approved, you know. Right. The network has to approve every single line. So, uh, you know, the one improv I snuck in, uh, snuck in was we filmed a, 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 an episode with Jim and Pam where we go out to lunch for Valentine's Day and <laughs> Phillips and I sneak off to the disabled uh, restroom and have sex, <laughs> <laughs> which they discover because they come up and they hear us through the door. Right. And we come back to the table and I say, would you like a piece of meat? And well, that, that's not in the script, you know. So, <laughs> so I knew that I had, that had a good chance of making making it, you know. But generally, one time I remember I tried to do an improv line. I thought, oh, this is a better line, you know. As a writer, I thought, and uh, it was being directed by the executive producer Greg Daniels, who looked at me and said, "Can you do what was written?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can." Because you spent a lot of time with uh, Phyllis, obviously, when you were involved with your scenes. Yeah. And now a lot of cast members are doing conventions. Have you been thinking about doing conventions with a lot of the cast members as well that's been doing these conventions? Well, I'm going to do the one in August. I believe it's the 6th and 7th uh, called Thunder Con, I believe, <laughs> uh, in it, it's. I think it's at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Uh, pretty sure. So I'm going to do that one. I've agreed to that one. Uh, I have the same uh, rep as all most of the uh, office actors do. So uh, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not real big on traveling. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm kind of the same way. <laughs> I, I really hate the airline process these days. It's a, it's a, it's a pain. You know, NBC spoiled me when they were flying me around and. Uh, in first class, the 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 uh, the shows don't want to do that, <laughs> right? <laughs> they just want to stick you in coach, you know, and you, it's just brutal. <laughs> it's a it's a war zone in, in there these days. I mean, have you seen all the clips? Uh, you know, they're all viral, pretty much. People going crazy oh, yeah. on 
planes. Finally, they got rid of those stupid masks. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah, and by the way, the planes looked online, all these viral clips. I'm like, do I really want to go to these festivals like I feel like I want to do? Yeah, no, they've made it rough. Because <laughs> it's like flying on a plane is almost like going to Walmart now. <laughs> I hate Walmart. <laughs> when I go to Walmart, I have a specific, I mean, I've done it twice in the last 10 years, and I have a specific reason. <laughs> I'm in and out. I do not get distracted. It's a beeline, you know, it's get it and get out. <laughs> right. So back to your filmography, what's probably stood out most to you other than The Office? Oh, you know, it's a uh, it's a life. You know, you you right. you, you go from uh, part to part. Some of them are life changers. Some of them are. You know, uh, as an actor, you're just trying to get better uh, all the time. It's kind of like playing golf. I mean, you never master the art. I mean, you never feel like I just had a perfect round. <laughs> Nobody ever does that. I mean, you always think, well, I could have done this better. I should have done this. Should have done that. You know. Uh, I think the key thing is to be consistent and not to be typecast, be able to do a little bit of everything. You know, I've been able to do uh, comedy and horror and, you know, I, I mean, I bridge the gap between as a horror villain to then be on a network sitcom is a pretty far jump. Not too many people did that. So right. <laughs> that's good for something. You know, I had range, you know, I always felt whenever I played something, people always said, oh, you're a perfect ranch hand. You're a perfect villain you're the perfect this you know you you get right into the to the thing where you uh become it as opposed to you know portraying it or attempting to to uh you know pretend <laughs> well robert what's next on your filmography do you have anything that you're shooting right now no i'm semi-retired uh, pretty much retired i mean i'm writing a book i mean that's <laughs> <laughs> I I made a film that I love called Dick Dixter, which was pretty much my my big hurrah. You know, I wrote it, I produced it, I cast it, I edited it, I did it all. I mean, it's uh, pretty much summation of my uh, forty years in Hollywood. Uh, it's about a drunk film director. You know, he's he's pretty much uh, Harvey Weinstein on steroids. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh yeah! Oh no! He, He's every ism that ever was, you know. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of the, the uh, fun thing for me because I always loved this film uh, with Peter O'Toole called The Stunt Man, which he yeah. plays the, the diabolical director in it, right? And so uh, and then I worked with um, I, uh, David O. Russell, you know, who was known as a, a, a tyrannical director. You know, he, he cur cursed, he cussed out Lily Tomlin. <laughs> <laughs> for goodness sakes I mean he called her all the you know he called her the c word <laughs> <laughs> so I mean it's a famous video and everybody kept going right before I worked with him they kept going why don't you watch that video with Lily Tomlin I'm like I want to watch him cuss out Lily Tomlin <laughs> <laughs> I like Lily Tomlin Lily Tomlin right. <laughs> Lily Tomlin come to my class when I was a young actor and she would practice her routines for the entire class. I mean, it was phenomenal stuff. I mean, you know, here's Lily. Oh, guys, we're not doing our scenes today. Lily Tomlin's coming in to try her new material. You're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a good, good class day. Um, so anyway, but, you know, I became friends with the Russell. I mean, we, we got along famously. We were doing a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I ate a lot of chicken that day. I spit a lot of chicken out. You know, they, they would just have the bucket ready for me. Yeah. And I just, bleh, <laughs> going to the next day, you know, hundreds of days. Well, Robert, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been fun. And sure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks, bud. <laughs>